In this video, we're going to go over the electromagnetic spectrum. So we're going to go in order. The first one you need to know are radio waves. Radio waves have the lowest energy but the longest wavelength. After radio waves, there are microwaves, and then it's uh, infrared. After infrared, you have the visible light spectrum. You have colors such as red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and violet. There's indigo and violet, but I'm just going to put V for violet. After violet, you have ultraviolet rays, and then you have X-rays, and then gamma rays, and then after gamma, you have uh, cosmic radiation. What you need to know is that as you go to the right, the energy increases. So gamma rays have more energy than X-rays. As you go to the right, the frequency increases as well. So ultraviolet light has a higher frequency than infrared. As you go to the left, the wavelength increases. So radio waves are longer than microwaves. So here are some questions. Which photon has more energy? A blue photon or a red photon? A photon is simply a particle of light. So the one that has more energy is the one that's on the right side. So if we compare a red photon to a blue photon, the blue photon's on the right side, so the blue photon has more energy. Now, which one has a higher frequency? Microwaves or infrared radiation? Frequency increases as you move to the right, so infrared radiation will have a higher frequency. Now, which one has a longer wavelength? X-rays or gamma rays? Wavelength increases to the left, so X-rays has a longer wavelength. All right, so let's try some more questions. Which one has more energy? Microwaves or ultraviolet radiation? So energy increases to the right, it's going to be UV light or ultraviolet radiation. Now, which one has a lower frequency? Gamma rays or cosmic radiation? Frequency increases to the right, so the one with the lower frequency is going to be on the left side. That's uh, gamma rays. Now, which one has a shorter wavelength? Yellow light or green light? The wavelengths increase to the left, but they decrease to the right, so the shorter wavelength is going to be on the right side. And so that's green. A green photon is going to be shorter in wavelength than a yellow photon. Now you need to know the relationship between wavelength, frequency, and energy. The wavelength is represented by the lambda symbol. As the wavelength increases, the frequency will decrease. And also the energy of the photon will decrease as well. If the wavelength decreases, the frequency and the energy will increase. So a short wavelength corresponds to a high energy photon and a high frequency. A long wavelength corresponds to low frequency and low energy. The equations that relate these variables together are these two equations. The speed of light is equal to lambda times V. V is the same as frequency, so if you want to, you can write F for frequency. C is the speed of light. For electromagnetic waves, they travel in space at a speed of 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. That's in an empty vacuum. Light, however, can change its speed when it travels in a different medium. For example, light travels slower in water. The speed of light changes in a material based on its index of refraction. So whenever you see the C variable, this is a constant. It's always 3 times 10 to the 8. V is the velocity of light in a certain material. 
So in water, water has an index of refraction of 1.33. That's the end value. So the speed of light in water is going to be 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second divided by 1.33. which is about 2.26 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So light travels slower in a different medium. A diamond, which has a much higher index of refraction, I believe it's like 2.4, a light travels even slower in diamond than it does in water. But in empty space, in air, the speed of light is 3 times 10 to the 8 in a vacuum. Now, there are some other equations that you need to know. Here's another one. The energy of a photon is equal to Planck's constant times the frequency. You might see V for frequency if you're taking chemistry. Planck's constant is equal to 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 joules times seconds. So let's work on some typical problems. Let's say if you have a wavelength of around... 700 nanometers. This corresponds to a red photon. So given the wavelength of this red photon, calculate the frequency of the photon. So we need to use the equation C is equal to lambda times F. So the frequency is equal to the speed of light divided by the wavelength. So it's going to be 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second divided by... Now what number should we plug in for the wavelength? Should we plug in 700? Notice the units is in nanometers. However, for the speed of light, we have the units in meters. If we plug in 700 at this point, we're going to have a mismatch in terms of units. So we need to convert nanometers into meters. It turns out that 1 nanometer is equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. So what we need to plug in is 700 times 10 to the negative 9 meters. All you have to do is insert the 10 to the negative 9, replace it with nanometers, and that's a simple way of converting from nanometers to meters. Just add the 10 to the negative 9 to it. So let's calculate the frequency. 3 times 10 to the 8 divided by 700 times 10 to the negative 9 and you should get a frequency of 4.286 times 10 to the 14 Hertz. The unit Hertz is the same as 1 over seconds or s to the minus 1. You can't write it both ways but you can write it as Hertz or s to the minus 1. As you can see when we divide the speed of light by the frequency, I mean by the wavelength, the meters cancel and you get 1 over s, which is equal to the unit hertz. So now that we have the frequency of the photon, let's calculate the energy of the photon. So let's use this equation, E is equal to hf. So based on the equation, you can see that as f increases, E increases. These two are directly related. So let's plug in Planck's constant, 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34. And we're going to put the units, joules times seconds. And then we're going to multiply by the frequency of 4.286 times 10 to the 14 hertz, or 1 over seconds. So notice that the unit seconds cancel. So we're going to be left with the unit joules, which is the unit for energy. So if you multiply those two numbers, you should get 2.84 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. So now you know how to calculate the energy of a photon. Now sometimes the energy of the photon may be represented in a unit called electron volts. So let's convert joules to electron volts. The conversion factor is 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19 joules is equal to 1 electron volt.
so let's start with the number that we have. In the next fraction, we're going to put the conversion factor. Since we have joules on the top left, we need to put the unit joules on the bottom. So for every 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19 joules, we have one electron volt. So we need to divide. So you should get 1.773 electron volts. Here's another question for you. So let's say if you have a blue photon with a wavelength of 480 nanometers. How can you use this wavelength to calculate the energy of a photon directly? So let's combine the equations E is equal to HF, Planck's constant times frequency, and C is equal to lambda F. If we solve for frequency in the second equation, we'll see that frequency is the speed of light divided by the wavelength. So we can replace F with C over lambda. So therefore, the energy of a photon is Planck's constant times the speed of light divided by wavelength. That's how you could find the energy directly from wavelength. So now let's solve it. So it's going to be Planck's constant times the speed of light, which is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, divided by the wavelength. Don't just plug in 480 nanometers. Make sure you convert it to meters. So you could just simply write 480 times 10 to the negative 9 meters. And then we just got to type it in the calculator. 6.626 times 10 to negative 34 times the speed of light divided by the wavelength in meters will give you an answer of 4.14 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. Now to convert that to electron volts, divide that number by 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19. And so this is about 2.585 electron volts. So here's another problem. Let's work backwards. So if you have a photon with an energy of 7 electron volts, calculate the energy in joules, calculate the frequency, and calculate the wavelength in nanometers. Feel free to pause the video and work out this example. So to convert electron volts into joules, this time we need to multiply by 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. Notice that the unit electron volts cancel. And you should get 1.12 times 10 to the negative 19 actually not 19 but 18 joules. Now once we have the energy we could find the frequency using this equation. So solving for F the frequency is the energy divided by Planck's constant. So it's going to be the 1.12 times 10 to the negative 18 joules divided by 6.626 times 10 to negative 34. So therefore the frequency is 1.692 times 10 to the 15 Hertz. So now that we have the frequency we can find the wavelength using this equation. C is lambda times frequency. So the wavelength is the speed of light divided by frequency, if you rearrange the equation. So it's going to be 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second divided by 1.692 times 10 to the 15 hertz, or 1 over seconds. So as you can see, the unit seconds cancel, leaving behind meters, which is the unit for wavelength. So if you divide those two numbers, 
you should get a wavelength of 1.773 times 10 to the negative 7 meters. Now to convert it back to nanometers, we know that 1 nanometer is 1 times 10 to the negative 9 meters. So these units cancel. And for this, we really don't need a calculator to perform this calculation. If we take this um, number, the 10 to the negative 9, if we move it to the top, the negative 9 becomes positive 9. So what we now have is 1.773 times 10 to the negative 7 times 10 to the positive 9. When you multiply two common bases, you're allowed to add the exponents. Negative 7 plus 9 is 2. So the wavelength is 1.773 times 10 squared. 10 squared is 100. So it's simply 177.3 nanometers. So to quickly convert from meters to nanometers, simply add 9 to this exponent. So negative 7 plus 9 will give you the positive 2.